makes your garden grow water and sunshine what makes your spirit grow knowing that she'll be mine friends welcome to Freedom Homestead my name is Tangie welcome to my kitchen for those of you who are new here we are in the process of renovating our home and we haven't quite finished the kitchen yet so please pardon the mess um, we are going to cook dinner today and uh, a while back someone asked if uh, I would show how I prepare uh, pinto beans and cornbread uh, to share the recipe and I said that I would that's been forever ago but honestly it's been a long time since we've actually had this as a dinner so yeah so we are going to make pinto beans and ham in the crock pot and then along with that we will have cornbread so I'm gonna bring you in and show you how I do this are you ready let's go okay so the ingredients that I'm gonna be using today of course are pinto beans and these beans have been sorted washed and soaked um this is about this might be about a pound and a half or so um i'm also going to be using a ham steak um this is what we like uh you can also use um smoked sausage is really good uh smoked turkey is really good we just like the salty uh flavor and smokiness that it adds um, I also like to add a couple of bay leaves, some dehydrated minced onion. If you don't have dehydrated minced onion, you could also just use, cut up a fresh onion and put it in there if you like it. Um, I have some onion powder, I have some garlic powder, and I also have some salt. So that is, and then of course water. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, and again, I don't measure, this is something I've been making for years and I don't, I don't measure it, so I'm going to eyeball it, and then we'll figure out kind of sort of how much we used. Um, so this is going to be in the crock pot. You can certainly do this in an instant pot, which you can look up the directions on how to do that. Um, but yeah, we're going to get this started. I do already have this turned on high because it's almost 2 o'clock, and we're probably going to eat dinner uh, around 6 or 6.30. So yeah, let's get started. This is really simple. We're going to add in our beans. And you can soak your beans overnight. Um, it's always good to add a little bit of something acidic like apple cider vinegar. That is to help uh, release the phytic acid, which is what, it's an anti-nutrient, um, and it also causes a lot of folks to have upset stomachs. So if you have ever eaten beans and decided that it truly was a musical fruit, then soaking overnight with some apple cider vinegar will probably help you. Um, I'm gonna add a two bay leaves. For the minced onion, I'm probably gonna add about a tablespoon. If you're gonna use a fresh onion, I would just use a small one. Depending on how much, if you really, really like, um, if you really like the flavor of onion, you probably wanna do something bigger than that. All right, let me grab a measuring spoon so that way I have a better I just do it until it feels right, you know? Until the uh, spirit of the ancestors say it's enough, you know? All right, so let me see here. If this is a tablespoon. Um, okay, yep, that was a whole tablespoon of onion powder. Yeah, I'm gonna say half a tablespoon of garlic powder. For salt, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'd say a teaspoon of salt. This ham steak I've had in my freezer forever. Um, so this is a little over a pound. All right, and I don't know if you just saw that, but all the juice that was in the packet, I also let go in there. All right, and then we're gonna add water. Okay, so that was about two and a half quarts of water. And um, since these have soaked, they're gonna swell a little bit more, but we also like to have lots of juice to spoon over the uh, cornbread. All right, so that's gonna go on high. Four and a half, four to four and a half hours. Um, and then when we come back, I'll show you how I make my cornbread. 
Okay, my lovely friends, it is almost 6 p.m. I just checked on the beans and they are perfect. Let's take a look. All right. So I did check on this periodically and stirred it and all that good stuff. So there it is. It is very, very good. Lots and lots of flavor. I'm gonna go ahead and take my spoon and I'm just gonna kind of break up the ham. And then I'm also gonna fish out the, whoop, there it is. Gonna fish out the um, bay leaves. It's kind of hard to do this while I'm looking through the viewfinder. One, oh, there's another one in here somewhere. There it is. So that is done. I'm gonna turn this to warm because Jack won't be home for another hour. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the cornbread. That way I can have all of my meal prep dishes washed up and everything looking good before he gets home. I'm gonna come over here to the oven and I'm gonna preheat to 425. Perfect. I was looking at the um, recipe on the back of the white lily cornbread thing. And my recipe is very similar, um, but with a couple of exceptions. One, I use bacon grease um, instead of oil and I don't use sugar. So as my cornbread, or as my oven is preheating, let me show you what I do. I need to quit looking through the viewfinder <laughs> and just look at what I'm doing here. Okay, that's too much. All right, so I like about three, about three tablespoons of um, bacon grease. And while the oven is preheating, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the skillet in the oven so it and the grease can get really hot because this makes for a really delicious, buttery, crunchy crust and we love that. Okay, so in our bowl, we're going to put in two cups of um, cornmeal mix. I like to use self-rising, just because it saves some time. So that's about one. That's a little more than two, but that's okay. All right, to this, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of bacon grease. That's actually more like a tablespoon. <laughs> I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt for flavor. And then we're gonna add about a cup and a half of milk. You also want to add one large egg that I forgot, but you'll see when I remember. I'm gonna need some more. That was definitely not a cup. That looks perfect. But does it really tangerine? Does it? Oof. Look out, ladies. All right, so the oven is preheated. Our grease is nice and hot, and so is our pan. So now we're gonna scrape this awesome batter into our skillet. This is going to go in the oven. Uh, we're going to check on it in about 25 minutes and see where we are. All right, so real life mistake. I forgot to put an egg in the cornbread. So I just pulled the skillet back out and I'm going to try really hard to mix this in there without the egg cooking. Fingers crossed. That might work, but I think my... Um, I think the cornbread's gonna stick really bad now. Yikes. And now we're going back into the oven for 25 minutes. It is done. Uh, yeah. It doesn't normally look like that. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna leave the recipe for the cornbread in, even though the texture is not perfect because of the mistake that I made. 
it still turned out okay. <laughs> so it's a little bit more dense because that mixed a lot. Um, but, but if you don't make my mistake, that's a little better. If you don't make my mistake, um, your cornbread will look uh, better and be a little bit more fluffier. Also, another great way to make your cornbread more fluffier, two different things. One, obviously, is buttermilk. That's like the obvious. But if you don't have buttermilk, and I should have done this, um, you can also add a couple of tablespoons of sour cream. That also does a really awesome job making your, um, making your cornbread a little bit more fluffier. But yeah, this would definitely look a lot better if I remembered to put egg in it as I was mixing it instead of after I had already put it in the pan and into the oven. All right, you guys, it is ready. So I'm gonna fix my bowl and show you how we do this. All right, so in case you are new to the wild, wonderful world of beans and cornbread, let me show you how this is done. First, you take your bowl, add your cornbread. I'm just getting a little bit of cornbread because I don't want a lot. You take your spoon, you take out some beans and a chunk of ham. That goes over the cornbread, and then you ladle some of that broth over top, like a soap. I like chow chow. Chow chow is a relish made with cabbage, spices, peppers, onions, sweet and tangy, kind of like bread and butter pickles, but more tangy than sweet. And then, you have to have raw onion, in my opinion. Okay. It's been a long time since I've made this and it's been a long time since I've had it. So I'm actually really looking forward to this. Here we go. Mm. The seasonings are right on the money. The, um, the meat really flavors that broth. Um, it's just so, so good. All right, another way to eat it is to take your onion and take a petal off and use it as your spoon. That's super good. Mm -hmm. So let me know in the comment section below, do you eat beans and cornbread at your house? Do you do it differently? Do you add sugar to your cornbread? Do you like chow chow or do you put something else in your beans? Um, anyway, this is definitely delicious. It's a comfort food and one I should probably make more often. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, remember to be vigilant, be prayerful, and be prepared. We'll catch you in the next one. God bless. Bye. And I'll show you how we do this. Uh, I'm gonna edit. Cool. Go to your cornbread. Sorry. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Oh, you went down my throat.